Greetings again, YouTubers. I'm back, and I'm starting my anime series review again, in which I take a certain series, watch each episode, shoot a review on that episode, and post each review to YouTube. Now, the series I'm going to do this time is Dusk Maiden of Amnesia. A nice little ghost anime, a paranormal anime, not horror. If you're expecting a horror anime, this is not it. But I still highly recommend it. Just don't expect it to be horror. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the first episode and tell you, yes, there will be spoilers. I'm going to talk about the episode, so obviously there will be spoilers. So it opens up and you can, it's understood the character is running. And you hear him panning and you can see his view, it's all shaky. And he gets to the roof and hears his name being called out, Teichi. Not Tenchi, like Tenchi Muyu, Teichi. But I'll get back to that in my second review because that's explained more in the second episode. So I'll wait till then to really get into it. The main episode starts out when you meet a new a character, Okanogi. And she's in the Paranormal Investigation Club room writing a report on paranormal happenings and such that happen throughout the school. Anyway, you start to see this cat charm lifted up. Starts moving around. And Okinogi really doesn't realize this. She doesn't notice it because she's too wrapped up in the port. She's a ditzy character. That, you know, over the top, ditzy, not too bright character that we've come to love in animes. So then the cat gets put down and there's no notice of it. And Okinogi reaches and takes a sip for coffee. Puts it back down. The coffee get lifted up. Move to the other side of the table by invisible force. And, you know, it's lifted up as if someone's sipping on it. Gets set back down on the opposite side of the table. So Okinogi, she starts reaching for the cup again and realizes it has gone. She jumps up and starts freaking out. Oh my god, there's a ghost in this ghost here. No way. I just haven't got enough sleep lately. She laughs it off, very ditchy like, but funny, humorous. And so she sits back down, finishes the report, and sets it down and starts pacing around the room a little bit. You see the papers get lifted up. Shh. Sort it through. And you know, like if someone's reading it, they get sat back down on the table. So Okinogi picks the report back up, looks through it, and then you see the cat starts moving around again. Does this for a few seconds and gets thrown down on the table. And finally, Okinogi realized something. She jumps out. She starts freaking out. There is a ghost here. There is a ghost here. And the doorway starts to open. And in steps Tichi. So, she calms down a little bit. But she's still freaked out. He's trying to tell her, there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about. So, they sit down and start talking. And it's funny because she... Okinogi, starts and Hitechi, can read her mind. She's thinking something, and he'll say an answer that corresponds to that thought. And then Kyrie, she comes in. She sits down beside Okinogi, and she keeps looking over at Tenchi, and she has this angry face. And she's saying, this is all your fault. She's mad at him and such. And I have a little bit three on that. I could be right, I could be wrong, and I'll explain that in a minute. So then, uh, Okinogi starts asking about the president of the club. Then she gets on the phone and then starts talking to the president. And once that's over, they decide to go to a dumb waiter in the school and investigate a paranormal rumor. They get there, and Okinogi starts talking about how the dumb waiter is supposedly haunted and ghost takes people in there, kidnaps them from another world which they're never seeing again. So, so far the dark the anime is kind of dark. Not oh really dark, but at least somewhat. Very well done. And one thing I love that the anime does, it mixes the dark and the humor very well. Because you see Techi kicked into the dumb waiter. You see a figure jump up, a shadowy figure jump up, kick him in the dumb waiter. And it starts up and goes down. So Teichi, I mean not Teichi, but Okanogi and Kiri freak out and run off. And in the anime, 
goes back to the very beginning. Where the episode first started, where Okinawa used to in the port, and you really realize what's really going on. I love how they did this, because it shows how you can see one thing one way, but it's really another way. Okinoki's there doing the report, and you know, the cat. You see, you finally see Yuko, who is the ghost. By far, is my favorite character so far in the series. She's very playful, very nice, very friendly. One of a lot of and that ghosts in anime are either cruel or they have this lonely complex, and she's neither. She even mentioned at one point that she really doesn't can't understand what loneliness is. That's cool. I, I like that. And it goes off the cliche some at least. And so you know she's doing she's picking up the cat, you know, looking through her report, moving the coffee and such, and it's all completely harmless. When at first when you see it happening, you don't see the ghost, you know that she's there. But you don't actually see the ghost, you're not sure. And then you start to realize that Okinogi, she can't see the ghost. Everyone else can. Because when uh, Techi walks in, he's talking to the ghost. And when Kirie comes in, she can see the ghost, and she's talking to her a little bit as well. So Okinogi, so far, isn't the, is the only character who can't see the ghost. Okay? So, the mind reading part, this is funny as well, because... What's really going on, since Okinogi cannot see Yuko, Yuko is asking Tenshi questions at the same time that Okinogi is thinking certain things, and Tenshi's answers just happen to correspond to both Okinogi's thought and Yuko's questions. Like, uh, Okinogi, in her mind, looks at him really serious like this, and asks him this random question about some civilization, when was it established, or something like that. And at the same time, Yuko asks Tenshi, why is she staring at you like that? He says, I don't know, which of course can be an answer to both questions. So it's really humorous how you really see, hey, wait a minute, that's all that's going on. And then um, another creative part that I liked was with the phone, because you find out that Yuko is actually the president of the Paranormal Club. He's on the phone and she's right there talking to him, going on the conversation. But he makes it seem as if he's actually talking to someone on the phone. And it's done very well. Another thing I should point out is behind Tenshi, there's a door, a sealed up door that says, if you open this, you'll be cursed. And I'll get into that later. And so, he, uh, then they go the dumb waiter, and Tenshi gets kicked into it by Yuko, but she's just playing around with him, just having fun. And while they're in the dumb way going down, there's no harm, no foul. She's not trying to hurt him. She's just playing around. I think she's trying to freak out Okinogi a little bit. So he actually touches her breast. And it's funny because it's not meant to be pervy. It's meant to be humorous. And he starts freaking out. Like, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. And I will say at this point, there is a little itchy in the series. A little bit of fan service, but it's not over the top. It's not overbearing. It's not the prime focus of the show, and it's still goes very along with the plot, so I love that. I love how the plot is still focused. Anyway, so during the classroom scene when uh, Kyrie is getting mad, I'm really wondering if maybe she likes Teichi a little bit, and she's a little jealous of the relationship between Yuko and Teichi, because she's always mad at Yuko, really. But anyway, so they did decide to go visit Yuko's gravestone. They find out that Yuko can't remember really remember much about who she used to be, therefore amnesia. But she does know that this is not where she's buried. She's actually buried under the club room, which of course is why the door says, if you open this, you'll be cursed. Well, that's all we'll say about the first step, so that's basically where it ends. Um, within the week, I'm going to try and get my second and third reviews up. This one isn't too great because it's rushed, but... I don't know if I'm cool with it. You can expect the other reviews to be a little better. Well, until then, I'll tell you that I do think the anime is very good so far, so check it out if you haven't already. Until next time.